All right, everybody, Into Wilderness doing a review on the Boker Haddock. Starting off with some uh, comparisons between the Para 2 and the full size military, this is the titanium version. The overall length of this Boker Haddock is 7.62 inches, the blade is 3.5. 37 inches and closed or the handle length itself is four and a half inches. The knife is four ounces. Let me compare it real quick to um, in, in blade or I'd say cutting surface to the para 2. You'll see that the haddock has a greater cutting surface. Let's see there it is. To there. Now the width of the blade definitely has monster thickness at the top of the spine, something that we would expect out of a sheep's foot, or would say modified sheep's foot blade. The reason why it's a sheep's foot blade, or I guess I'd say the, the design of sheep's foot blades in general, wait until a little bit further down the knife before it comes down to a point. Sheep's foot blades also have a thick spine so that out of most any design you would have the greatest uh, cutting control because of how thick it is on the top. Your finger resting on the top gives you maximum control while you're cutting. Modified because standard uh, sheep's foot blades would have a straight edge where this one has a small belly on it. Look at the tip on this and also just the uh, edge geometry really nice here how fine of a tip that comes down to or edge so that's nice now let's see also the the blade itself is stone washed you can see that it has a nice worn finish to it so that uh, whenever you use this knife hard, it's not going to really show wear. See that? And the Anzo Maker's Mark. The steel on this is N690, which has been compared somewhat to, uh, I guess, between 440C and VG10. Now I've ha I've had to sharpen this knife a couple of times. It's pretty easy to sharpen. It does seem sh to to need sharpening a little bit more than some of my S30V. You know, I guess compared to that pair of two, it does seem to be sharpened need to be sharpened more than that pair of two does. But it's pretty easy to sharpen. Let's move on to the the G10 on this. You see this nice Anzo pattern on the G10. It is two-tone you see the gray color there see how deep those patterns go into the g10 which is nice it provides some nice grip on there nice lanyard hole got three screws two standoffs in the back and the pivot screw and that's it and basically these screws right here will screw into the, the titanium which I'll uh, get to that whenever I take the knife apart here in a second. So that's the G10. The titanium frame lock is also stone washed. You can see it has a nice worn pattern to it as well. Hides uh, marks and scuffs on that pretty good. The titanium slab is pretty thick even compared to this large uh, this full size titanium military the frame lock is about the same size not at the top but down the frame lock it's about the same size okay the pocket clip is tip down or tip up it comes from the factory tip down I have to say that this stainless steel pocket clip is a very simple design but it works very well 
it has to be one of my favorite pocket clips. See how easy it. Let's see the, this pocket clip right here, how high it rides in the pocket, like so. This knife can be a little bit uncomfortable whenever you're wearing pockets that come at a slant and that aren't very baggy because whenever you're having to wear it like this, getting your hands past uh, these two tips on uh, the G10 are not that comfortable. On a uh, pair of pants that has that you know that has a flat pocket on there to where you've got room on this side to get down, it's not an issue at all. But whenever you're having to come across like so, not quite as comfortable. Now let's see here. I'll talk more whenever I take the knife apart about this standoff that has been one issue and some YouTube reviewers. Uh, in terms of uh, it being loose, I will tell you whenever I close this knife, there's absolutely zero play side to side, up and down, no play at all. Let me uh, do a little lock up demonstration here so you can see what that looks like. I'd say that's at about maybe 80%. nice and solid. Whenever you do grip the knife hard, you can hear that it does go in a little bit more. Okay. For the most part, you can open and close this with one hand. Whenever you do grip it tight, see I can't open that up. It's still too sticky, so I need to have a little bit of help here. You can open it with one hand anywhere along the top here because I didn't uh, grip this hard or open it up that fast it should be easy to close with one hand we'll see here there you go all right so th that's about all that i can think of here let me uh take this knife apart i'm going to show you the insides and then that's about it i'll wrap it up all right so the haddock is apart very very easy to disassemble not a whole lot to be said about this because I can show you a close-up of where the lock bar interfaces with this steel. So you've got the lock bar interfacing here. And you also have the stop pin interfacing here. The detent here. Okay, so you got that. Let's move on up to the titanium. I left the, the screws in here just so that I can explain something in a, in a second here. Let me get a close up of, of this ball detent. Now, okay, so the deal with, uh, with this thing right here with the stop pin, this is not one piece, but this stop pin is difficult to get out. Like I can't really maneuver it out and talking to, to Boker just because it's, you know, metal on titanium, it gets sticky just like the lock bar gets sticky sometimes. This is uh, pretty sticky, so it's not moving. Now with this right here, it fits into this little hole here in the G10. You can see how Let's see here, it's not really getting any closer there. Okay, so, but you can see how deep that goes in there. So that whenever it's pushed down in there, okay, it's not going anywhere. I'm not sure what the issue was that other folks were having, uh, but this is not moving anywhere. All right. So that's that. And this right here, the thing that's interesting about uh, about this particular knife is that, you know, the, the these two screws here will go through these two holes, not screw into the holes. There's no thread in uh, the standoffs. Go through here, 
directly, not screwing in. The only port that these screws screw into would be the titanium itself. Okay, so I'm not quite sure what you think about that. I guess it's good that it won't uh, strip any threads here. If these strip threads, th these threads are stripped at all, I guess these would be easy to replace. I'm not too thrilled about the fact that it screws directly into the titanium. It seems like it would have been better to put two screws on each side to screw into a standoff. But they've designed it this way, which makes the actual design from this angle of the knife very simple instead of having another screw going into here so that's that now another thing that's interesting about this design would be the washers now the the washer that touches the titanium is this black teflon primarily graphite so it's a graphite teflon material okay mostly graphite does have some teflon in it so that goes on the titanium side now on the the g10 side it actually has two washers it has a bronze washer i'm not sure if it's phosphorus bronze but it's a bronze washer that goes up against the g10 and then it also has a teflon washer this is the kind of washer that you'll see on the uh, the hinder knives okay so you got that and then you have the uh, pivot screw and that's it. it just takes a few minutes to take down you know a few more minutes to put back together and then that's that's all you got folks let me know if you have any questions thanks